One Hit Wonderland, where we take a look at bands and artists known for only one song. I am still doing requests, and... <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they sent me a weird one today. I'm on a Mexican radio. I'm on a Mexican radio. Yeah. This is... This is Wall of Voodoo performing their hit new wave song from 1983, Mexican Radio. And as you probably know, we are no strangers to new wave on this show. We've covered our fair share of goofy looking early 80s MTV bands, but even among the vast cavalcades of oddball makeup and hairspray syntax, this is still kind of out there. Because unlike the previous New Wave acts on One Hit Wonderland, this wasn't a big hit in the Billboard sense. It only made it to 58 on the charts. No, it was a hit in the MTV sense. I've mentioned that MTV in its early years only had like a dozen or so videos, so they just throw anything on there. And late at night, it would just get exceptionally weird. For example, here's a little tune from around the same time that got a lot of video play. <laughs> This is Dog Police, by the band Dog Police. Very popular on MTV back in the early 80s. Yeah, I don't know either. Mexican Radio is not quite a forgotten esoteric artifact like Dog Police by Dog Police, but I feel like it fits in roughly the same mold. Its main attraction is that it's... it's just odd. It's a new wave country and western song about listening to music south of the border. And despite not being quite ever a hit, it's had a long shelf life. This isn't the first request I've gotten for it. It's it's in that sweet spot of being just weird enough to stick in the brain. Unlike Dog Police, which was too weird to get any traction. Can I do a video on Dog Police? No, they paid me money for this. All right, turn that dial to XERF and fix up some barbecued iguana. This is Mexican Radio by Walla Voodoo. On today. Okay, Walla Voodoo started out as an LA punk band in the late 70s. But before that, lead singer Stan Ridgway, full name Stannard Q. Ridgway, so I'm not making that up, Anyway, before the band, Stan had a little business making movie soundtracks. And, uh, no, not like John Williams soundtracks here. We're talking, like, weird independent films. Yeah, not that exactly, but think of stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. Well, anyway, his little business apparently didn't do very well or last very long, but during one of his, I assume, many hours of unemployment, he would visit the punk club across the street, which is where he met the rest of the band. And eventually they started their own. They got their name because Ridgway said that he was trying to make his organ-heavy soundtracks sound like Phil Spector's famous Wall of Sound, but one of the guys said it sounded more like a Wall of Voodoo. Now, I said before, most of the major New Wave bands were British. The only big American New Wave act I can think of is Devo, and on the lower tiers, yeah, I guess he had Wall of Voodoo. I don't know if they've ever said outright that Devo was an influence, but their first songs are very Devo-y. But they wouldn't stay that way for very long. Soon, Ridgway's experience with movie soundtracks would creep in as he started incorporating more Western movie influences, like Ennio Morricone into his work. Yeah, see? You never saw Devo doing any cowboy stuff. Does not count. So, let's check out the revamped New Wave Cowboy Act that Wall of Voodoo became with their first single, Ring of Fire. Wait, the Ring of Fire? Love is a burning thing, and it makes a fiery ring. Uh, yes, that Ring of Fire. It's, uh, it's an interesting take. It's, it's certainly something new. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames got higher. So, um, that's what Stan Ridgway sounds like as a singer. The only way I can think of describe it is he sounds like the guy from Cake trying and failing to do a John Wayne impression. I, uh, I don't really know what to make of this. It's unique. 
At the very least, it's a pretty effective setup to their most famous hit. Well, like I said, back in the day, MTV would just throw anything on. The weirder, the better. Wall of Voodoo benefited greatly from it. And say what you want about them, there hasn't really ever been anything else like them. They played country western guitar, they had a drummer, but they didn't really use drums a lot of the time, they had a drum machine, and the drummer was just there to play cowbell and stuff. Eventually, Cowboys and New Wave wouldn't seem quite such a mismatch. I wanna be a cowboy. Cause living in the wild, wild west. But at the time, whoa, that's just crazy, dude. Feel a hot wind on my shoulder. I dial it in from south of the border. But why are they singing about this? Why Mexican radio? Well, back in the day, Mexican radio stations were actually a pretty big deal, especially if you lived in California like these guys did. You see, it used to be you could get around American broadcast regulations by setting up just barely over the Mexican border, which was apparently an empty, lawless wasteland. And, the touch of the world that is older. and then you'd set up this super-powered antenna that you could hear from Mars and broadcast up to the States, a lot of the time in English. and. There wasn't anything the government could do about it, so you could tune in and listen to a lot of really good music, along with commercials for sketchy diet pills and other things you couldn't legally advertise in the U.S. I think at some point there was a plan to stop these airways from crossing the border by building some kind of wall. Don't know if anyone's still promoting that plan, though. Anyway, that's probably what inspired this song. I don't know if that's exactly what this song is about, though. For one thing, the Mexican radio station he's listening to appears to be in Spanish. The talk beat of the DJ can understand just what does he say. Matter of fact, I'm not sure what's going on in this song exactly. I leave it on when in bed I slumber. Okay, he's listening to a Mexican radio because it helps him sleep. Which is not really my experience listening to Spanish broadcasters. Attention, con el centro Estados Unidos, goal! 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 No, wait. I take requests on the telephone. He's the DJ on the Mexican radio station. Or, actually, you know what? I think he's trapped in a Mexican radio. I'm on a wavelength far from home. He's literally been sucked into the airwaves and he can't escape. Ah, what's going on? I understand just a little. No comprende, it's a riddle. The more I think about it, the more the comparison to Cake seems apt. Wall of Voodoo were an 80s band, but there was a distinctly 90s sense of smarmy irony to them. I wish I was in Tijuana, eating barbecued iguana. Uh -huh. Mexicans don't eat iguana, you racist. Uh, no wait, I'm told that's a thing. That's a, that's a real thing. Okay, jump the gun on that one, I apologize. But yeah, it's a joke song. There, there's this whole sense that they're above what they're singing about, for some reason. Which even the goofiest 80s hits I've covered did not have. Does he... like Mexican radio? Does he like listening to mariachi music? Is music even what he's listening to? Okay, he's listening to Mexican talk radio? I don't know why you'd listen to that in English. I, I think the whole song is just a joke that Mexican radio exists. Like, look at him. Speaking Spanish. Existing. Look, no, I, I don't like this song. It's novel, but beyond that, it's just kind of smug and annoying. Gee, wonder why people didn't want more of this. Let's turn the dial. To be honest, the information I have on Wall of Voodoo is so scanty that I'm not actually quite sure what the failed follow-up even was. From the info I have, my best guess is this. The hot Mojave and the cherry he start his whole life anew. This is Call of the West. If there was a real music video shot for it, I can't find it. But honestly, I'm betting there wasn't. Because even in the crazy heyday of MTV, no studio is going to shoot a video for this. You'll hear the drums and the brush of steel, and you'll hear the call of the West, call of the West. It's not really a pop song. It doesn't have a chorus, barely has a melody. It's a weird, rambly story song about a guy who moves west. Sometimes the only thing a western savage understands are whiskey and rifles. And it's, it's kind of like a cowboy song. 
except it takes place in the present. And it doesn't really go anywhere. And then, Stan quit the band! Right as soon as Wall of Voodoo hit it big, their front man quit. Apparently there was a lot of drunken rock and roll antics going on in there, so there was friction. Also the label was ripping them off, and Stan Ridgway just had enough, so he quit. And that's where the Wall of Voodoo story ends. Or does it? No, it does not. You see, in the grand tradition of Van Halen, Judas Priest, Journey, and other bigger bands, Wall of Voodoo just picked another lead singer. This guy's Andy Preboy, and they picked him and they just kept on keeping on. I mean, it's not like they were replacing Freddie Mercury here, they weren't risking that much. Stan wasn't even the main songwriter, they all wrote the music, so, you know, I can see the logic. And things had already changed a lot by 1985. New Wave was no longer a novelty, it was quite mainstream. So this new guy, as you can see, he's a, he's a little more photogenic. Kinda looks a little like a skinny Robert Smith from The Cure. And they were still pretty weird on the album, but for this single, they're a lot more commercial. You could imagine them alongside In Excess or Tears for Fears. But it did not really work out, as this wasn't a hit anywhere. It's not like Wall of Voodoo was a big draw before, but they did have a cult following. And apparently this cult following just checked out when Ridgway left, and the band never really recovered. Here's another single they released. It's a cover of Do It Again by The Beach Boys. This 80s surf thing is... It's not working. You ain't no B-52s, fellas. Their only follow-up after this was a live album called The Ugly Americans in Australia. And you can note the asterisk there because a couple of the songs were not in Australia. <laughs> and then having limped all the way to the end of the 80s, Wall of Voodoo called it quits. See, there is an interesting story after Wall of Voodoo, and it does not involve Wall of Voodoo. The really interesting stuff is all about Stan. I was a PFC on a search patrol, hunting Charlie down. Stan Ridgway went on to a fairly decent solo career, believe it or not. And apparently Call of the West was the harbinger of things to come because his solo career is full of these weird, rambly songs that are like a cross of Leonard Cohen and Warren Zevon. And he even, get this, he even had a top five hit in the UK. This is called Camouflage. It's like a cowboy ghost story. Like the kind I remember hearing on classic country radio like all the time. Except, it's not about cowboys. It's about Marines in the Vietnam War. And he said the boys just call me Camouflage. Like a Marine nicknamed Camouflage saves a narrator from Charlie out in the jungle. When I turned around, he was pulling a big palm tree right up out of the ground and swatting those Charlies with it. But when he gets back, it turns out that Camouflage was actually dead the entire time. But this here is Camouflage, and he's been right here since he passed away last night. Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's basically what his career is like. Long, rambly songs like that. This one is a film noirish thing about a girl on the run. This one is about smugglers. He even wrote one about the history of Wall of Voodoo, which was helpful for this video. So they reunited for a brief tour in 2006. In the meantime, Stan Ridgway still releases albums, and he went back to soundtracking low-budget movies, which all look pretty bad. Future Kick. I... kind of? I don't really like any of the stuff I heard from Wall of Voodoo, and I'm not sure Stan Ridgway's solo stuff I'm that into either, but you know, it's uh, it, it was original. No one else was making it. I can totally see why they have a cult following, but uh, no, it's not for me. But if you are an enthusiast of cowboy-influenced synth pop, well, here's a band for you. <laughs> 